This is the Master Brewers Podcast, brought to you by the Master Brewers Association of the Americas, a volunteer organization dedicated to continually improving the products and processes of our membership since 1887. Let's go! 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 Master Brewers brings you interviews with the industry's best and brightest in brewing science, technology, and operations. This Master Brewers podcast is proudly sponsored by Hopsteiner, a global leader in the hop industry focused on quality, sustainability, and innovation in new hop varieties and hop products. Contact our brewery sales team to provide you with the hop-related tools you need to craft your next great beer. For more information, visit hopsteiner.com. Additional support provided by... Get to know Proximity Malt. We malt superior, European-style, low-protein varieties grown close to home in Delaware and Colorado. Domestically grown, precisely malted to style. With our team of seasoned experts and two brand-new malt houses, try what's really new in malt. Check us out at www.proximitymalt.com. We add it to the fermenter because if you add it to the hot kettle, um, odds are it'll get bound in that tube and what you're adding won't actually be readily available um, for yeast. It's no secret that yeast needs zinc for healthy fermentation. But how much and when and where should you add it? What happens when you add too much zinc? This week on the show, microbiologist Joe Kenny of FX Matt Brewing Company joins us to help you get the right amount of zinc into your fermentations. This episode originally aired in June of 2017. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode that you won't want to miss. Joe, you gave an excellent presentation during the District Western New York meeting back in February about zinc and fermentation, and I thought it would be nice for listeners to hear about your work and some of your observations. Before we get into that, how about giving us a rundown on why we need zinc for fermentation in the first place? Well, you know, yeast requires quite a lot of, um, of different things uh, for, for its health and for its growth and for fermentation. Um, some of these, you know... Uh, come in in larger amounts than others and zinc is one of those trace metals along with you know copper and potassium and iron and and uh, cobalt and magnesium uh, and nickel as well um, you know that that's uh, required um, it cannot make zinc so we need to add it we need to make sure that is that it's in the wort um, other things that it needs uh, you know yeast would be with uh, you know vitamins and purines pyrimidines uh, and as well as oxygen, um, but but zinc is required um, for it's a cofactor for enzyme activity, uh, making alcohol, and also for for cell growth. So where where do you think the best place in the process really is to add zinc, and what are the various potential sources for zinc additions? Well, so zinc is actually um, in the wort; it comes from barley, but the problem is it gets bound up in true. Um, so that tube can end up uh, in the bottom of your kettle or in your whirlpool, and it won't make it to the fermenter. And if it does make it to the fermenter, it's still bound up in that tube, so, so yeast can't really get to it. Um, we add it to the fermenter because if you add it to the hot kettle, um, odds are it'll get bound in that tube, and what you're adding won't actually be readily available um, for yeast. Um, sources uh, outside of you know, the barley itself, um, you can buy off the shelf um, supplemental zinc, uh, these yeast nutrients like yeast X or, or uh, micro elements, um, and there are dosing guides that you can follow. Or you can just buy uh, pure zinc sulfate heptahydrate um, from like Brewer Supply Group, and it comes as a white powder, and you can dilute that with water and, and add it right to your yeast before you pitch it. Let's talk about some of the uh, benefits of sort of getting zinc right. If you're able to optimize zinc additions, what does that do for you? Well, you're going to get more consistent fermentations. You're going to get more complete uh, fermentations, uh, probably uh, shorter fermentation times. Um, so you're, you'll speed up your fermentation rate. Um, your yeast should be healthier. Uh, you'll be able to go to higher generations before you repropagate, before you throw away your old yeast. 
Um, you get better consistency and flavor. And a really big one for breweries is, is flocculation. Um, zinc is required alongside calcium um, for, for, for flocculation, for that yeast to, to bind together and fall to the bottom of the tank. Um, or to rise to the top of the tank if you're if you're top cropping, um, so you can get better yeast collection, but you'll also get clearer beer, so you'll have less effort for filtration. You've also got a zinc calculator spreadsheet that you've shared for other brewers to use, so they can uh, use it to dial in their own zinc additions. I'll tell listeners where they can find that at the end of the episode, uh, as well as um, some information about your upcoming Master Brewers webinar. Uh, Joe, is it safe to assume that you'll kind of walk folks through how to use your calculator during that webinar? Oh, sure. Yeah, we can do um, a demonstration. I've kind of made it with some um, data validation so that you can select anything from homebrew size, you know, five gallons, if you're doing like a little pilot type batch in your brewery, if you're homebrewing, all the way up to uh, barrels and hectoliters. Um, so you just kind of select your your units that you're working with and um, and the parts per million that you want to um, add your your zinc as well as pitching rates and whatnot. It's got a lot built into it. Um, nice. It's a neat little, neat little spreadsheet. Cool. All you need is Excel. I love a good spreadsheet. Coming up. Uh, so that when those cells split and that zinc is divided among the daughter cells, uh, there's more zinc available uh, for, for those daughter cells to take up uh, for their me- metabolic activity. I'm John Bryce, and you're listening to the Master Brewers Podcast from the Master Brewers Association of the Americas. Support for this podcast is brought to you by... ABS Commercial is a full-service brewery and parts outfitter. From our Raleigh headquarters to our Denver office, we proudly offer brew houses and fermenters from three barrels and up, yeast brinks, boilers, kegs, chillers, tri-clamp, and other stainless parts, all with the quickest delivery and lead times in the industry. Learn more at abs-commercial.com or call 877-BREW-ABS. ABS Commercial. We are brewers. Additional support provided by... Bring the world to your brew house with BSG's diverse selection of ingredients and services. Our dedicated customer service team and industry experience provides you with the assistance you need every step of the way. Make BSG your supplier of choice with products essential to making great artisanal beverages so you can stay focused on your craft. Visit us at bsgcraftbrewing.com or contact us at 1-800-374-2739. And thanks also to... Malt Europe Malting Company is a leading supplier of craft malt across North America. As a farmer-owned company, Malt Europe has carefully crafted quality malt from locally grown barley for decades. The result? A portfolio of base, specialty, and distiller's malts that exceed the exacting standards of craft brewers. Learn more and buy online at malteuropemaltingco.com. Here's what's coming up on the Master Brewers calendar. The Eastern Canada Golf Day is August 29th. The District Ontario Annual Golf Tournament is September 6th. A lot of golf in Canada. District Northwest meets in Bend the weekend of September 7th. The District Ontario Iron Brewer is at Common Good Beer Co. September 27th. District Western New York meets at FX Matt in Utica October 3rd. New Hampshire Brewfest 2019 is October 12th in Portsmouth. District St. Louis meets October 17th. And the brand new District Georgia is holding its first annual pig roast October 19th at Monday Night Brewing in Atlanta. District Mid-Atlantic meets October 19th at Union Craft Brewing in Baltimore. Registration is now open for the 2019 Master Brewers Conference in Calgary. Be sure to tack on a couple of extra days to enjoy some amazing hiking and make the 45-minute trip to Banff, which is one of the most picturesque places on the planet. Check out the full calendar of events at mbaa.com for more details or to find a district meeting near you. Now back to the show. All 
right. So the question of how uh, how much zinc to add is is really kind of a, a bit of a can of worms, and is largely the topic of of your presentation. F- before we get too far into that, why don't you first tell us what happens when brewers overdo it with zinc? Well, you know, like I said, zinc's a trace metal. Um, so just like any any metal or any any supplement, you don't want to take too much. Um, you can overdose. Um, so worst case, you know, you start to, you start to kill your yeast, um, because you've quite literally just, you've poisoned it. Um, yeast is, it will actually absorb, uh, metal trace metals, uh, from the environment. Um, and it's actually used as a bioremediation. So, um, generally, uh, you know, we have copper kettles, but we have no copper in our finished beer because the yeast is taking it all up. It'll do the same thing with zinc. Um, but you can actually have uh, all the all the opposite effects of what I mentioned before: decreased fermentation rate, decreased real degrees of fermentation, um, early dormancy. Um, if if they flocculate too fast before fermentation is complete, so they'll have diacetyl issues. Um, and what what we noticed, uh, if you just slightly overdo it, um, cement like yeast on the tank bottom. We actually have uh, flat bottom fermenters um, at our brewery, and so. Uh, the the yeast was actually turned to a uh, consistency of uh, thick, chunky peanut butter. So, not ideal at all. No, not for collecting. No. Okay, so you set out uh, in in your work. You set out to look at the cumulative effects of adding zinc over the course of multiple generations. Why don't you tell us how you went about that? So um, we do a very basic um, experiment in the lab uh, using tall tubes. Um, you can really use, and they're, they're one liter tubes, you could use any volume really. Um, so the idea was to take wort that had been chilled and aerated off of our system. So it's the same wort, we use the same wort stream each time. And we added, um, you know, we pitched yeast um, according to our normal pitch rate. And we did different concentrations into, say, four different tubes. So we had four different concentrations. And we allowed those to ferment for a week. We measured the gravities as they dropped. Um, and then what we did was we, we decanted, we dumped off that finished beer, we collected the yeast from each tube, kept it all separate, counted it so that we could pitch again into another round of, of wort, um, again, dosing the zinc um, incre- you know, into each tube so that we, you know, if we, if we put, did 0. 0.075 parts per million in tube one, uh, the following week, that tube also got 0. 0.075 parts per million, and so on. Um, so we could we could see the the effects of dosing, uh, say for four different four different concentrations over three generations. Generally speaking, your goal is really to match the zinc addition to yeast cell growth, and your your argument is essentially that it's not enough to just have a ppm spec. What really matters is the ratio of zinc to yeast cells that need it. How are you currently? going about that and and what are the next steps to kind of further optimize your your zinc additions well yeah that was an idea that i had um because a a lot of published data uh, gives uh, zinc dosing in parts per million but um you know work content varies from from brewery to brewery some breweries use a lot of adjunct some breweries use no adjunct um and you know the amount of zinc that's in your work um you know varies on crop as well for barley so there's lots of reasons why um, you know, what works in one brewery won't work in another. And I said, well, hey, why don't we, since it's a function of, you know, inside the cell, why don't we match the amount of zinc that we add to the number of cells? So one thing that we did here uh, um, at the brewery at FX Matt is we kind of started with what we had. We knew we had a good number. Um, and I kind of calculated the, the amount of grams, and it was a very infinitesimally small number of grams of zinc per yeast cell. And and we put that into a spreadsheet. It's kind of buried in there, um, but I can increase it or decrease it as I see fit. Um, so we have actually made a slight increase to the amount that we add to our ale based on that number, but we had to have somewhere to start. And since historically we, ha- we were getting good flocculation, we were getting consistent fermentation values, we decided to start with approximately the average for where we were. That's very interesting. And so I assume that, you know, in a situation where, um, for whatever reason, you have consistently higher uh, cell growth um, for a particular strain, in that case, you know, you're going to need more zinc, right? That is correct. So, you know, if you're um, 
maybe the the argument would be if you only pitch uh, five hundred thousand cells per milliliter, but high croys, and you've got you know fifty million cells per per milliliter, um, you're going to have a whole you're going to have maybe another round of growth uh, compared to somebody who's pitching a million cells per milliliter. It's an extra doubling, uh, so you may want to add a little bit more zinc uh, to that fermentation, uh, so that when those cells split and that zinc is divided among the daughter cells. Uh, there's more zinc available uh, for for those daughter cells to take up uh, for their me- metabolic activity. That's kind of the idea. Okay, we talked about st- uh, this being zinc being strain dependent. Uh, what about um, ale versus lager? Is there any? Can you make any generalized statements about you know do do does one need more than the other? So lager actually lager strains need less. Um, so this is actually from this published data. Um, Generally, the range is 0. 0.5, um, 0. 0.05, sorry, 0. 0.05 to 0. 0.150 parts per million. Uh, again, that's going to be specific uh, to the variety. So if you're using something like a 3470, um, you know, German lager versus, uh, you know, some, some other lager strain, uh, then, you know, it's going to vary. Um, ale generally needs more. Ale Ale, the low end for ale is the, is the high end for lager, so 0.15 to 0.3 parts per million. And again, that's also variety specific, where some, some strains are going to need more than others. So um, it's definitely something that you want to tailor to the strain of yeast that you're using. Um, and, and so again, wort composition is different, but also um, yeast strain uh, is different uh, as to how much zinc to add. That was Joe Kinney here on the Master Brewers podcast. You can find Joe's PowerPoint slides and his zinc spreadsheet in the Master Brewers District Presentations Archive. Just type zinc into the industry's best search bar at mbaa.com. Check out the brand new Master Brewers podcast website. You'll find guest profiles, information about upcoming live events, and more, all at masterbrewerspodcast.com. You better hurry up. This is the last week to take advantage of discounted early bird registration for the 2019 Master Brewers Conference. And be sure to tack on a couple of extra vacation days. Here's why. It's a really beautiful city. It's close. I mean, it's it's an hour from the mountains. You're in Banff, one of the most picturesque places on the planet. Um, within 45 minutes if you want to venture out. And then if you go even further, about an hour further is Lake Louise and Moraine Lake, um, which is beautiful and picturesque as well. Turquoise waters, uh, brilliant crisp air, great people, great hikes if you like hiking. Uh, Some of the best hikes that I've ever done have been around Lake Louise. So lots of people get stirred into like the touristy zones. And um, there's so much more to, to Banff, Lake Louise and Calgary than the tourist zones. Uh, must-sees. Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of um, not Lake Louise itself, although it's beautiful, but Moraine Lake, which is a, a, a lake that's a little bit further up the mountain. Um, I always tell people to go visit that lake. There's some beautiful hikes. Um, Johnson Canyon's a pretty easy hike. Um, if you do the small, small hike, uh, just to a couple waterfalls, uh, that's just outside Banff. Um, if you go a bit further, you could do Ink Pots. Uh, which is about, I think it's about a four or five hour hike all in all, depending on your pace. Um, and if and if you go further than the ink pots on that same trail, you, you end up in Lake Louise. So it's, it's linked to Lake Louise and then it becomes a full day deal. But in general, um, take in, I would say if, if I were talking about Calgary, I would take in nature. I mean, it, it's at its finest. The city's beautiful. Um, and, and lots of, lots of energy on 17th Ave and, um, electric Ave, but, um, the real gem is heading to those Rockies and, and driving into Canmore and Banff and Louise and, and, and just looking around at, at, at nature at its best. It's, it's an absolutely spectacular place to be. Are you enjoying the Master Brewers podcast? Let me tell you about a simple way you can help us keep making more. Take a minute to thank our sponsors. There's no way we could produce this show without generous support from sponsors like Hopsteiner, ABS, Proximity Malt, BSG, and Malt Europe. 
So please, let them know you heard their message on the Master Brewers podcast and that you appreciate their support. Thank you.